This episode, I take the listeners into a new realm, a new world of discovery pertaining to the methods and proven success of one of the rarest treasures the state of Texas has inside its borders. The following interview is with Gene Solak of the Solak Farm in Iola, Texas, east of College Station. This step-by-step instructional program will encourage and better equip those farmers and ranchers to better succeed in beef production. I now introduce you to Mr. Gene Solak. It's a real privilege to have the opportunity to share the information with the people out there and at the same time having the opportunity of making friendship with you and working with you to further preserve as well as getting other people involved in this. This is nothing new, it's just reviving those things that have been forgotten. Because now when you call me, I'm going to say, go to your computer and pull up this and it'll all be there. The pictures and the wording and everything else is going to be there. Because uh, a lot of you are calling me and, and you know about all you and I can do is talk about okay what the problem is. It's going to be our purpose today to show the beginning and what is necessary for you to do to get started. Turn it on! I'm the biggest joke around. The first time that I met Gene Solid, and I'll tell you this story when we get out there, Gene had 52 acres that he was grazing, rotational grazing, on one side of his his drive going in, and he had a hundred head of cattle on there, and they were the fattest, slickest, best looking animals you've ever seen in your life, and I was like, oh yeah, that's what I want. I tell you, there's a lot of things that we want to discuss today, and we'd like to have this so that we may discuss and give you a chance to ask questions, and then why did you answer it that way? So we're going to try to play this game for you. And what we hope to do here today is to stimulate your thinking and where you got to begin here and how you're going to get over to here that you walk around in forages here after it has been grazed down three and four times during that grazing season. At the present time, we have forage that is up this tall that has been grazed down four different times since January. This year has been a difficult year for all of us. And we should have seen more response out here than what we'll be observing today than what we're seeing today. Through no fault of the operators here, it has been caused by Mother Nature because that's been happening for 20 years. And you have that backlog of seed in there that will come up. We have seed that come up in July, August, September, and October, and June, and May but it doesn't live, it dies. So this is what we're doing. We don't make hay. We're letting all of that go down on the soil so that it can reproduce itself at the right time. So we have enough seed there. Those that come up early, then they'll die off. But we have others that are coming up. They don't have that privilege now because they haven't had clover here. And it's going to take a bit here to get this soil so that it will react so that that clover can come up and so that it can grow. As you go out here today and, and begin to kick off the top of the soil, 
you're going to find it to be rather hard. And there's not a whole lot of humus and organic matter on the top that is a good medium for that little seed which is about as big as the eye and a needle, very, very small, that it's got to fall in that medium there and be able to germinate and put down a root and get enough moisture to live on. If it's just laying up there on this old hard ground that's almost like putting it out up there on top of concrete, it doesn't have much chance of putting a root down to live. So we've got to provide something with us. And this is what we're wanting to look at and to observe today. And we'll find the clover that's reacting and we're going to look at that soil and see what the difference in is there and where it's not coming up. And what's going to have to happen so that it can come up and grow. Ball, right? Uh, arrow leaf and crimson and ball. Uh, in our first uh, plantings and everything, we used about 10 different clovers that we made plantings of. And the first year, arrow leaf was our best producer. Crimson was the second. Ball was the third. The second year, air leaf was still tops. Ball was second. Crimson was third. The third year, ball has rooted up to the first place. Air leaf was down second and crimson was gone. Then it just kept on, ball has taken over all of our place. We still have some air leaf that comes up and it's fine. The clover that you need to plant, and I'm gonna tell you this one and you need to write it down. This is the name of it. The one that performs on your place. <laughs> I told you, how many did I tell you that I planted? 10. Ten. Okay. And the one that is performing for me is Ball, B-A-L-L. -L. It came in here from Turkey in 1950. I don't care if it came from Spain or China. If it will grow here and produce and live, that's the one I want. So I'm not an advocate of any particular one. I want the one that will perform on this soil and will do it consistently year in and year out. So uh, you're not going to get me to tie up into just one particular thing. I had soil tests last year that they made on the place after our field day. Our soil test came back with a 6.9 pH. Great. Uh, everything else was doing pretty good. We were a little low in some of the things. And I don't recall just what they were now. But it went on and a recommendation was made to apply two tons of lime per acre. And I kind of dropped to my knees and thought about, holy moly, that's more lime than I put out in the last 10 years. I thought about it more and more and I began to read some material that came out of Canada <clears throat> that a friend of mine had sent to me from Tennessee. He'd been pulling up a bunch of stuff and I read that and this was the calcium, I don't remember the title of it, but it was a little book of it and he had sent that to me and I read that. And after reading it, studying it, I got two tons of lime put out per acre. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to need to get out here in the pasture and see some things, yes.